Hmm. Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Hope I got, hope I'm looking all right. All right. Happy Sunday, everybody. Mm -hmm. Happy first Sunday. <clears throat> Excuse me. Happy, happy first Sunday, everybody. Thank you, Lord. Happy first Sunday. Happy first Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Sunday, Leslie Pitchford. Happy Sunday to you. God's continued strength and healing over you in Jesus' name. Good to see you on last night and the family. Happy Sunday. Hallelujah. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, Brother Norman Bells. This is Communion Sunday, Brother Norman. So please have your communion elements ready. This is Communion Sunday. Praise the Lord. So we pray that everybody's doing good today. It's cold. I want to sleep in, but I'm here. Happy Sunday. Barbara Roundtree, happy Sunday. Happy first Sunday to each and every one of you. This is Communion Sunday. First Sunday Communion. So have your elements ready. If you have grape juice and crackers, fine. Water and bread, fine. Whatever elements you can pull together will be our communion for today. First Sunday Communion Sunday. Happy Sunday, Jill. Good seeing you last night. We had an amazing time in the presence of the Lord on last night. So we thank and praise God for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. Amen. Happy Sunday on this first Sunday of May. Happy, happy Sunday to each and every one of you in Jesus' name. Let's begin to fill this news feed up with hearts for the Lord. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Jill. Please press the share button. Sharing is caring. We pray that someone will watch this video this morning on your page that needs to see it, hear it, listen to it. So please if you enjoy what you listen to every Sunday, press the share button. It doesn't cost anything to press the share button. And thank you for thank you all for those of you that share every week. We appreciate you sharing. The more that you share it, the more they can hear this word from the Lord. Amen. So happy Sunday to each and every one of you <clears throat> as we have come into a new month of May. May, 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 <clears throat> May 2024. Happy Sunday, Sister Gwen. Missed you last night. Blessings to you and to your sons in Jesus' name. Blessings to you, Sister Gwen. Happy Sunday to each and every one of you. On this cold, cloudy Sunday morning in the state of New Jersey, amen. We pray for Texas today. Texas has been hit with a lot of rain and storms, so we pray that God will just uh, touch Texas where they have uh, lost power and lost homes from the tornado. So we just pray that God will restore uh, the state of Texas, uh, West Texas, I believe in Jesus name. Happy Sunday, Sonia Roundtree. Happy Sunday, Ma Doris. Happy Sunday to each and every one of you that are getting on this morning in Jesus name. Please also get your communion elements ready. Whatever you're using for communion this morning, please get your communion elements ready. Happy Sunday, Pastor Faye Scott Gordon. Happy Sunday to you. So this is Communion Sunday. I have a good scripture for you all today. We're going to go into the word. Um, it was inspired from last night's service. So I definitely want to read that. Happy Sunday, K. Love. Blessings to you and the family. Let me know how mom is doing. We just released God's healing and strength to mom this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Sunday, my Rita Newton. Happy Sunday, Rita Newton. Blessings to you and your family and to your son. In Jesus' name, good to see you on May God continue to bless you, cover you, and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy to see everyone on this first Sunday morning. This is our communion service, so you can prepare your heart for communion this morning uh, with grape juice and cracker or bread and water or cracker and water, whatever you have. Let's pull our elements together so we can uh, partake in the first Sunday morning communion. Happy Sunday, Von A. Jackson. Love you and miss you. Blessings to you, to grandma, to ma, to your mister, to everyone in Jesus' name. Happy Sunday. 
Good, that's good. Tell her I asked about it, Caleb. I'm glad to hear she's getting stronger every day. And Father, we just release supernatural healing to continue to consume Kay's mom, Lord, this morning in Jesus' name. We thank you that she gets better and better and stronger and stronger each day in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Melanie J. Red. God bless you, Tika McLam. God bless you, Carol Raptus. Amen. And we pray for Desmond this morning and his sleep and finances, Father God. We pray that you would cover Desmond, that you would keep him, Lord, and cause his sleep to be sweet, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, we ask that you bless him in every area of his life and his finances, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Miss you, Carol. Want to see you soon. Happy Sunday. Amen. So we just thank and praise God for this first Sunday of May. Yes. I've got a prayer. I'm going to pray over you all this morning. So we just thank and praise God for this first Sunday. We thank God that this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Let's fill this news feed up with hearts for the Lord. Let me just see some hearts. Hearts, hearts, hearts. I like when y'all tap the hearts and they come up, but some people, if they're on a computer, you can't tap them. But I love to see the hearts come up for the Lord. Amen. We'll be starting prayer soon. We, we meet every Sunday morning at 7.50. I use it says 7.55 a.m. We meet on every Sunday morning at 7.55 a.m. 7.55 to 8.05 is meet, meet and greet. And on uh, Saturday nights, we meet in person at 69 Myrtle Street, Cranford, New Jersey at the Harvest Training Center. Our ministry interest is in the back, and we meet every Saturday night at 6 p.m. Amen. Thank you, Melanie J. Red. Thank you. Amen. And also, this fourth Saturday, May 25th, we're going to, I'm going to be doing an interview with one of our members who has a dynamic healing testimony. So, fourth Saturday, and we will have that live. She's going to share a powerful healing testimony uh, by our own, very own uh, Leslie Pitchford, Saturday uh, May 25th at 6 p.m. sharp. Amen. So we just thank and praise God for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. Amen. Thank the Lord. We thank the Lord for his goodness, mercy, and his grace. Amen. So we just ask that you continue to be with us, pray with us, come visit us. We would love to see you in person. And we just thank and praise God for all that he is doing for all of us this Sunday morning. I see it's only 11 y'all on, so we got to rise and shine, everybody. I know this was a hard morning to get up, <laughs> but we thank and praise God for life, health, and strength. And we pray that whoever watches this, whenever they watch it, that it will bless them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right, we'll be starting in four minutes. So we just bless the Lord for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for life. We thank God for health. We thank God for strength. We take no days for granted. Amen. Happy Sunday to Pastor Beverly Sylvester. Happy Sunday. And please, Pastor Bev had a birthday on May 1st. So can we give Pastor Beverly A. Sylvester some love and wish her a happy, happy birthday as she turned into, as she went into the next journey of her life. Happy birthday, Pastor Bev. Beverly A. Sylvester. Great woman of God, my friend, my friend, my sister. So we thank and praise God for you. Happy birthday, Pastor Bev. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday. I mean, happy Sunday, Naira Carter. Amen. She says she's coming in live from work today and not the sleeping ministry. I know that's right. So, Father, we thank you for Naira Carter as she's at work today that you cover her, keep her, and strengthen the Lord. Bless her, bless her co-workers, bless the patients, Father God. And we just uh, pray that all those that are working this Sunday, wherever they're working, that you grace them, cover them, and keep them. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you, Naira Carter. Amen. Love you. Amen. Yes. Happy birthday. That's right. Love on Pastor Beth. She's a great woman of God. Amen. Put those birthday shout outs into Pastor Beth. She's a May 1st baby. All right, we got two more minutes. Two more minutes. Amen. Hallelujah. Happy May to everybody. Happy May. And may God show himself strong and mighty in you in this month of May in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. 
Hallelujah. So we thank and praise God for everyone that's on. We praise and thank God that you will pray that you enjoy your day today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Happy Sunday, Claudia Carroll. I don't know if I said it earlier. I saw your name, but I don't know if I said it. Happy Sunday, Claudia Carroll. Love you. Amen. Happy Sunday, Catherine Hatfield. Good to have you on this morning. Happy Sunday to you. Welcome to the hope. <clears throat> Happy Sunday to each and every one of you. Yes, God is awesome. Yes, he is. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. All right. We're going to start prayer and go into this morning's first Sunday communion service to our virtual service. <clears throat> All right. It's 8.05 and we're going to, we start on time. So let, let us pray. Uh, Father, we come to you this morning. We bless you. We thank you for this day. We thank you that this is the day that you have made, Lord, and we come this morning to rejoice and to be glad in it, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for, for life, for health, and for strength, oh God. We thank you for another day that you have allowed us all to see. We thank you that this is the day that you have made, and we come this morning to rejoice and to be glad in it, Father God. So we ask that you cover us, keep us, and strengthen us, Lord. We pray that you have your way um, in this service today as we go into your word today. Let the word of God Encourage us and strengthen us today, Lord. We thank you that no weapon formed against your people shall prosper, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray a special prayer for those that are going through um, a time of sickness and a time of uh, disease. Father God, we pray for those that may be going through sickness today, Lord. And we just release supernatural healing and strength to those this morning that are sick in their body, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray a special prayer for uh for Carla York this morning, one of our listeners, we pray that you continue to cover her, keep her and strengthen the Lord in Jesus name. Father, we release your supernatural healing to flow in her body from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord, in Jesus name. And as we're praying, if you know someone that needs a, a touch in their bodies for healing, just release their names in Jesus name. Father, we pray for Ma Doris this morning that you continue to cover her, keep her and strengthen her, we release healing to my Doris this morning in Jesus name. And Lord, we thank you that you were wounded for our transgressions, that you were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you and by your stripes we are healed. Father, I release supernatural healing to Lisa Rozelle this morning. Lisa Rozelle sweat that you continue to heal and strengthen her body, Lord, in Jesus name. Anyone that's going through in their physical bodies, we speak healing and strength, Lord, in Jesus name. Lord, we thank you that you are our healer. So, Father, we just thank you this morning for healing those that uh, are sick this morning, for healing those that are going through challenges in their body, Lord. We pray a special prayer over my sister Rita, Father God, that you cover Sister Rita, that you strengthen her this morning in her body from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray for Harriet uh, Royster, Father God, that you bring healing to her body and everyone that's on this line. And Father God, not just... Um, physical healing, but we pray for emotional healing. Lord, we thank you that your word declares that you heal the brokenhearted and you bind up their wounds. So Father, we pray for those that may be low in their spirits. We pray for those that may be battling depression or bat battling anxiety, Father God, and we speak a peace and a calm and a rest to your souls this morning in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for Mom Red this morning that you cover her and keep her, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you for my brother, Mark Hamlin, Father God. We thank you for his life today, and we ask that you continue to cover him, keep him, and strengthen him, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray for every listener this morning that you be with them, that you watch over them, that you protect them, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for Carla York, Father God. We thank you for strengthening her body, Lord, and strengthening her soul this morning in Jesus' name. Because when I pray, I don't just pray for physical bodies, but I pray for healing for our souls, our minds, our wills, our emotions, the things that would try to bring us down. So we, we trust you, Lord, to bring healing to our lives, God, in Jesus' name. And Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this first Sunday, Lord. And Father, as we uh, prepare our hearts for communion and for your word, we pray that uh, your word would just go forth, what it would just encourage us 
and strengthen us and give us the strength we need to go on and to do what it is that you have called us to do. So Father, we just thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for our family, our friends, our loved ones in Jesus name. And we thank you for all that you're doing in all of our lives this morning. So we say, Holy Spirit, have your way in Jesus name. Lord, every name that's being listed now on the chat, Father God, every, every family that's being represented, we pray that you move in the lives of our families, Lord, in Jesus name, that you move in the lives of those that need prayer, those that are sick, those that are uh, going through a time of sickness, we speak healing. Those that are going through a time of bereavement because of loss of loved one, Father God, we pray that you heal those that are going through uh, the pain of loss of loved one, Lord, in Jesus name. Lord, heal their hearts this morning for you heal the brokenhearted and you bind up their wounds. So Father, we just thank you for your goodness, for your mercy and your grace. We thank you. We lift up every family that's re being represented here. All the families that are being represented on this line this morning, we pray that you save, deliver, and set free in our families, our friends, our loved ones, our coworkers, those that we know, those that we don't know, those that are all around this world. We pray for their, for global salvation, for global healing, Father God, in Jesus' name. And Father, as we go into your word this morning, we pray that your word would fall on good ground and that we would all be doers of your word and not just hear us. And we just come this morning with hearts of gratitude, hearts of thanksgiving, and hearts of praise. And we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you receive that prayer, I want you to say amen. If you believe that you're going to feel better, that you're going to do better, that God is the God that answers prayer. He hears and answers prayer. We're going to talk about that today, that, that God is the God that hears and answers prayer. Amen. We don't just pray to take up time. We don't just pray to take up space. We serve the true and living God. And we believe that when we pray that God hears us. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say it again. We, we believe that when we get up here and pray that God hears us and God is the God that hears and answers prayer. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, no matter how hard it may be, no matter how low your spirits may be, I pray that this broadcast lifts your spirits. I pray that this broadcast gives you the word of God. I pray that this broadcast gives you hope in Jesus' name. I know that we're not in person, we're virtual, but there is no distance in prayer. There's no distance in the word of God and God's word never returns to him void. It always accomplishes what it's sent out to do and it prospers in the thing where to it's sent. So we serve a God that hears and answers prayer and there is no distance in prayer. Amen. So we bless the Lord. I see your amens and I'm just believing God that God is the God that will hear and answer your prayer. Father, I pray for everyone's children. I just want to release a blessing over your children this morning. It just came to my spirit. Father, we just lift up every uh, we lift up every parent this morning. We thank you for every mother, every father this morning. And we lift up uh, their children this morning that you cover. We pray that you cover their sons, that you cover their daughters this morning in Jesus' name. Those that are saved, we pray that you cause them to grow stronger in the Lord. Those that are not saved, we pray that you would draw them back to you by your Holy Spirit. And we pray, Father God, that you would save their sons save their daughters, protect their sons, protect their daughters, cause their children to accept Jesus Christ into their lives as Lord and Savior, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray that you cover them as they go. We pray that you cover them as they come, Father God, that you be protection all around uh, these parents' children this morning in Jesus' name. Lord, some of them, they don't even know how they're doing. They may have not have spoken to them, but Father, we pray that you cover their sons, cover their daughters, wherever they may be. And we just speak restoration to families, Father God, restoration to children, even communication wise, Father God, we pray that you bring healing and strength to mothers and sons, mothers and daughters, uh, fathers and sons, fathers and daughters, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we just release salvation, deliverance, and wholeness. Father, we break every power of addiction that will come against our sons and daughters this morning, and we speak freedom into their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God praise. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we thank and praise God for this morning. And I'm going to share. Um, I had a teaching ready for you all. <clears throat> well, I had a teaching ready for last night. 
that I was going to teach last night, and I was going to teach it also today. Um, but what happened was we had prayer last night, and I just didn't feel led to teach what I had before me, although, Lord willing, I do plan on teaching it next week, and if the Lord say the same. But um, when we were in prayer last night at the church, uh, Minister Steph, she, she had a scripture during prayer, and um, she read it during the prayer, and then after we had worship, and the, the scripture resonated with me so much, excuse me, I wanted to release it this morning. It was so good. Amen. I don't even know if Minister Steph is on, but if she's not on now, she'll catch it later. So, uh, but it was Psalm 116. So we're going to read Psalm 116. I'm going to read the whole division of Psalm 116, and I'm going to share uh, with you, and then um, I'm going to share with you, and then we'll have communion, and then um, we'll release you. But I'm going to read Psalm 116 from the Living Bible. I like the way it reads from the Living Bible. Amen. Somebody put up Psalm 116 from the Living Bible, TLB, the Living Bible. Amen. Father, as we go into your word this morning, we pray that your word, there she is, Minister Steph. God always gives Minister Steph really good scriptures. I'm like, Minister Steph, you always get good scriptures. So she read this during prayer last night when she led our prayer service, and she's doing a phenomenal job. And um, the scripture was so good, I didn't even speak on my message. I just let her release it, and then I kind of piggybacked on it. So we're going to share that scripture this morning, Psalm 116 from the Living Bible. That's okay, Minister Steph. Just wanted to make sure you were here and give you your props. I didn't want to make it seem like I'm, you know, I'm the wonder this morning <laughs> when I, when you inspired me with this scripture. Amen. So we like to give honor to whom honor is due. Amen. And I pre let me just thank you all for coming on this morning. I thank everyone that's here this morning. I thank you all for sharing. Um, you are, you are all the reason I get up on a Sunday morning when I really want to keep laying down, especially this morning. But I, I appreciate you. I know uh, I talked to some of you and I know that you all really look forward to this Sunday morning live. This is your church service. And to those that are uh, in and can't get out, I'm so happy to know that you are blessed by our Sunday morning uh, service every Sunday morning at 7.55 a.m. So I appreciate you all being on. I appreciate you all sharing. And uh, we just want to do this, that people will be helped and that God will get the glory. Amen. So, Father, as we go into your word this morning, we thank you that your word will fall on good ground and that we would all be doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Psalm 116, the Living Bible. This is so, so good. It says, I love the Lord because he hears my prayers and answers them. Because he bends down and listens, I will pray as long as I breathe. Death stared me in the face. I was frightened and sad. Then I cry, Lord, save me. How kind he is. How good he is. So merciful, this God of ours. The Lord protects the simple and the childlike. I was facing death and then he saved me. Now I can relax for the Lord has done this wonderful miracle for me. He has saved me from death, my, t my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. That is so good. I shall live, yes, in his presence here on earth. In my discouragement, I thought they are lying when they say I will recover. But now, what can I offer Jehovah for all he has done for me? I will bring him an offering of wine and praise his name for saving me. I will publicly bring him the sacrifice I vowed I would. His loved ones are very precious to him, and he does not lightly let them die. O oh Lord, you have freed me from my bonds, and I will serve you forever. I will worship you and offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Here in the courts of the temple in Jerusalem, before all the people, I will pay everything I vow to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. That was Psalm 116 from the Living Bible. I'm going to read that again. Um, it says, I love the Lord because he hears my prayers and answers them because he bends down and listens. I will pray as long as I breathe. I'm going to come back to that. It says here, death stared me in the face. I was frightened and sad. Um, I don't know how many of you have maybe de have stared death in the face. Maybe you were in a car accident or maybe you got a um, bad doctor's report. I know um, 
on the 25th of this month, we have our very own Sister Leslie, who's given a healing testimony. And she was a person who stared death in the face. But God said, no, you shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. So Saturday, May 25th, virtually and in person, Sister Leslie Pitchford is going to give her healing testimony. But how many of us, maybe we got a death report or maybe we got bad news and we didn't think we were going to make it. Happy Sunday, Jeanette Williams. Happy Sunday, Brother Thomas. Happy Sunday to each and every one of you that are getting on. It says, death stared me in the face. David said, death stared me in the face. I was frightened and sad. When when death stares you in the face, you will be frightened. You will be scared. When you get a, a, a diagnosis of cancer or you get a, a, a diagnosis of an illness and you don't know if you're going to live or not, death can stare you in the face or you could be in a car accident. Amen. So so there are times in life where death will stare us in the face. I thank God last week I had to uh, get a colonoscopy. And of course, the devil was trying to lie to me. But I thank and praise God that my my colonoscopy, everything came back clean. I have a clean bill of health and I don't have to go back until five years. So even there are times when the enemy will try to lie to you and make you think that you're going to die or make you think that it's over for you. But let me tell you something. You shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. And you're not going nowhere until God is ready for you and until your work is done. Amen. So you be encouraged and uh, you're going to live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. But David said here, verse three, death stared me in the face. I was frightened and sad. That's like the report I spoke about probably a couple months ago about Hezekiah. Amen. Carla York, she says, amen. Death scared me in the face so many times. Thank God. That's right, Carla York, but you are still here living in the land of the living. Amen. Father, we lift up uh, Melissa Williams and we pray for her healing in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, there are times when things come against us and things try to frighten us, but God, God has the last say so. Amen. And David said here, death stared me in the face. I was frightened and sad. Then I cried, Lord, save me. Amen. And I tell you today that no matter what the enemy says, uh, you're not going nowhere until God is ready for you. Amen. And I spoke a few months ago about Hezekiah, how when Hezekiah got the death sentence and Hezekiah, the, the prophet came to Hezekiah and told him uh, that you're going to die to get set your house in order. You're going to die. And he, Hezekiah went before the Lord and he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. And the Lord came back from that death sentence and told him, Hezekiah, I have heard your prayers. I have seen your tears and I will add 15 years to your life. 15 years added to your life is good news when you got a death sentence, when the Lord says you're going to you're going to go. So God has the last say so. Amen. Even when he got when, when Hezekiah got that word, he told him, set your house in order for you shall die and not live. And Hezekiah went to his wall, went to the, turn his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. And God heard his prayers. The scripture says specifically, God heard his prayers. He told Hezekiah, I have heard your prayers. I have seen your tears. And the Lord said, I will add 15 years to your life. Let me tell you something. When you pray and talk to the Lord, God has the last say. So prayer will change God's heart. Mm -mm -mm. There you go, Pastor. They said, well, Pastor Mark, always talking about prayer. I'm telling you, there is power in prayer. Prayer will change God's hearts. When God, when the prophet told Hezekiah from God, he was going to die and not live. Hezekiah was discouraged. He, he was right here where David was. With death had stared Hezekiah in the face and Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he prayed to the Lord. And he said, after he prayed, God said, I have heard your prayers. I have seen your tears and I will add 15 years to your life. 15 years sounds good when you get a death sentence. 15 years sounds good when you get the prophetic word that you're going to die. Amen. Amen. Minister Steph said, my sister stared death in the face. But God still, but God, but she's still here. Amen. God has the last say so. Don't allow the enemy to make you fear that you're going to die. Let me tell you, and, and let me tell you something. As Christians, when we die, because we all will die one day, we just don't want to die before our time. When we do leave this earth to, to, as born again, spirit filled believers, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. To be absent. So we still win. Even when we leave this earth, we still win because we go home to be with the Lord. Amen. And we're all going to go home to be with the Lord. That's why we got to stay close to him. Amen. All right. Verse three, David said, death stared me in the face. I was frightened 
and say it. When you get a death sentence or you get a bad report or you get a, 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 a diagnosis of sickness, of course, we're human. You're going to be scared. You're going to be frightened. He said, then I cried or he prayed. Then I cried to the Lord. Lord, save me. How kind he is. How good he is. So merciful. This God of ours, the Lord protects the simple and the childlike. Amen. The Lord protects the simple and the childlike. I was facing death. And then he saved me. Now I can relax. <laughs> Amen. When God lifts that death sentence, you can relax. It says, now I can relax for the Lord has done this wonderful miracle for me. Let me tell you something. God is the God of miracles. People will tell you miracles are over. Miracles are not over. Somebody type in the word miracles. God is the God of miracles. We don't hear enough people talking about it. I don't care how negative the world is. I don't care how chaotic the world is. I don't care what's going on in the world. We serve a God who is the God of miracles. Glory to God. We serve a God of miracles. We serve a God that can do anything but fail. So let me tell you something. No matter what the report is, God has the last say so. And God is the God of miracles. God is the God who turned water into wine. God is the God that, that heals sick bodies. God is the God that will save your children. God is the God that can do anything but fail. No matter how discouraged you get, don't lose your faith. Keep your faith in God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Amen. God is the God of miracles. Glory to God. And you all, most of you, all, I'll say, I'll go for a step further and say, all of you on here today are a miracle. You face a sickness. You face a loss of loved one. You face some bad news. You face some a, a divorce, a separation a bad marriage, a death in your family, and you're still here. You are you are a miracle. You're a walking, living, breathing miracle. I'm speaking to miracles today. Amen. Glory to God. You are still here. How the devil lied to you and made you think you were going to die, or how the devil lied to you and made you think that you weren't loved, but you're still here. You are a living, breathing miracle. Glory to God. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. All right, let me move on. Verse, uh, I got to read this again. Let's go back to verse three. Death stared me in the face. This is David. He said, death stared me in the face. I was frightened and sad. Then I cried, Lord, save me. Amen. When you're going through something, just pray and say, God, save me. That's a prayer right there. Lord, save me. Lord, help me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, whatever. So just continue. No matter where you are, cry out to the Lord and just say, Lord, save me. Uh, how kind is he? How good is he? So merciful, this God of ours. We serve a merciful God. <clears throat> in the midst of your shortcomings, in the midst of you doing things, all of us doing things and saying things, even as Christians that we shouldn't say and do, God is merciful. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. For the Lord has done this wonderful miracle for me. He has saved me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I shall live, yes, and his presence here on earth. David said, I would have fainted. I would have quit. I would have given up unless I had believed to see what the goodness of the Lord and the land of the living. And I speak life to you all today. I speak life to you that you're going to live and not die to declare the works of the Lord in Jesus name. Verse 10 says, in my discouragement, I thought they are lying when they said I will recover. Uh, we all get discouraged. I want to speak to your discouragements this morning. We all get discouraged discouraged. No matter how much we love the Lord, no matter how much we pray, no matter how much we quote scripture, no matter how much we praise God, there are times in all of our lives where we all get discouraged, where we all get down, where we all get low, where we all feel like we don't want to get out of the bed or what's the use. But I speak life and strength and encouragement to your discouragement in Jesus' name. Father, I pray this morning for those that may be listening that are fighting a spirit of discouragement. Father, I speak your love. I release your strength, Lord, in Jesus' name. I release the joy of the Lord to be your strength. I speak peace to you this morning. The word of God says, I will keep you in perfect peace as you keep your mind stayed on me. So Father, those that are facing discouragement this morning, I pray that you lift every spirit of discouragement, that you lift every spirit of defeat, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I speak strength 
and I speak encouragement and I speak that you shall live and not die. And I speak that you will live and enjoy your life in Jesus name. The Bible said that the thief comes but for to steal, kill and destroy. Jesus said, I am come that you would have life and have it more abundantly to the full until it overflows. God gave his life. He sent his son, Jesus, that you would live and enjoy your life in Jesus name. Glory to God. So I speak to your discouragement. I speak to discouragement when you're by yourself. I speak to discouragement when you're home alone. I speak to discouragement when you're on your job. I come against every spirit of discouragement, every spirit of anxiety, every spirit of fear, doubt, unbelief in Jesus. Every lie of the enemy, I curse every lie of the enemy this morning in Jesus' name. And I speak encouragement to your soul, to your mind, to your will, and to your emotions in Jesus' name matchless name. Glory to God. Pastor Beth says, I received the perfect peace of God. Yes, the enemy's always after our peace, our joy, and our strength. The enemy doesn't want any of us to have any peace, any joy, any strength, any money. The devil don't want you to have nothing. But I, in Jesus' name, you shall have all that God has in store for you in Jesus' name. David said in verse 10, in my discouragement, I thought they are lying when they say I will recover. But now, what can I offer Jehovah for all he has done for me? I will bring him an offering of wine and praise his name for saving me. I will publicly bring him the sacrifice I vowed I would. His loved ones are very precious to him, and he does not lightly let them die. O oh Lord, you have freed me from my bonds, and I will serve you forever. Let me tell you something. When God blesses you and God heals you, and God delivers you and God moves you. You got you have to just continue to serve God forever. You know, as long as I live, I will serve the Lord. Verse 17, I will worship you and offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Here in the courts of the temple in Jerusalem before all the people, I will pay everything I vow to the Lord. Praise the Lord. When you when God moves for you and God blesses you and God restores your life and God answers your prayers, you give him everything you got. Amen. But I really want to lift up the first verse, the first two verses. I want to really lift up the first two verses. And I really want to encourage you this morning, those of you that have been praying for things or for people, and it seems like nothing's changing. It seems like nothing's happening. It seems like you don't know what to say, what to pray. It seems like the more you pray, the more it doesn't seem like things happen, but I just want, I want to speak to those today and let you know that God is the God that hears and answers your prayer. I want you to know that God hears your prayers, amen, because sometimes when we don't see things right away, we can be discouraged and think that God doesn't hear our prayers, but I want you to know that God is the God that hears your prayers. Listen to, I'm going to close out with this, verse 1 and 2. Psalm 116, the Living Bible, verse 1. Listen to what David said. David said, I love the Lord. This is so good because he hears my prayers and answers them. I got to take a sip to that. <laughs> mm, that's so good. That is so good, y'all. You should be encouraged this morning knowing that God is the God that hears your prayers and answers. He don't just hear them and walk away. He hears them and answers. I want to encourage you that God is the God that hears and answers your prayer. And let me tell you something. God answers those prayers in his time. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right, Melanie J. Reg. Melanie just says, pay, pay God back for his goodness too. Yes. Amen. Amen. I want you to, I, he said, I love the Lord because he hears my prayers and answers them. So I want you to know all of you that love the Lord. All of you that are praying that God is the God that hears your prayers, but you got to know that God answers them in his timing. It's the timing of God. Somebody put the timing of God or somebody put in his timing. That's where you got it. You got, that's what you got. You got to pray, give it to God, leave it in his hands and don't be a spiritual Indian giver. Don't pray and take it back or don't pray and get discouraged. No, put it in his hands. First Peter five, seven says casting all your cares that's good. Listen to this. Casting all your cares or your prayers upon him because he cares for you. Amen. That's a good word right there. Casting all your cares and your prayers upon him for he cares for you. I love the Lord because he hears 
my prayers and answers them, but he answers them in his timing. Glory to God. He so you have to trust, say so you have to trust the timing of God. That's a good word right there. You have to trust the timing of God. All of us. That's for me too. Because sometimes his timing and my timing is definitely two different, two different times. Because we want everything by yesterday. And God is not answering everything by yesterday. But so we have to trust the timing of God. Amen. Closing out with this, Psalm 116 and 1, it says, I love the Lord because he hears my prayers and answers them because he bends down and listens. Amen. It's just like if you have a child and you don't hear what the child says, so you bend your ear down to listen to that child. As God's children, he bends his ear and listens to our prayers. That is so good. And then David said, I will pray as long as I breathe. And that's what we want to do. We want to be men and women of prayer, men and women that are that always talking to God. Amen. That's something we need until we leave here. We need to always talk to God. Amen. Always talk to God. God is the God that hears and answers our prayer. Happy Sunday, L.A. Rosell Sweat. Amen. Been praying for you this morning. Amen. That is so good. He Bends down and listens. I will pray as long as I breathe. I want to encourage you to continue to pray and talk to God. We pray and talk to God until we leave here. That's our main communication. That's our hotline. We stay in fellowship with God. You can. You don't have to go to church to pray to God. Let me say that for those in the back. You don't have to be in the church to pray to God. You don't have to be on your knees to pray to God. You can pray to God while you're washing your face. You can pray to God while you're taking your shower. You can pray to God while you're washing dishes. You can pray to God while you're doing yard work. You can pray to God while you're on your job quietly to yourself. Amen. You can talk to God anywhere, anytime, in any place. Amen. So I'm going to close out with that scripture. Amen. Psalm 116. I read verses 1 through 19, but I'm going to close out with verse 1. David said, I love the Lord because he hears my prayers and answers them. Because he bends down and listens. We serve a God that listens and hears our prayers. Amen. Don't allow the enemy to make you think that God's not hearing you. Amen. And don't allow the, don't allow the enemy to think that you're not, you know, some people think because they have challenges in their life or because they have struggles in their life or shortcomings in their life that God doesn't hear them. God hears your prayers because let me tell you something. We pray from the place of the finished work. It's not because of what I do or don't do that God answers my prayers. It's because of what God does. And I'm talking about as, as born again believers, just because we're Christians and just because we love the Lord, we're not perfect, but the Lord perfects those things that concerns us. So it's not about what we do or don't do. It's about what Jesus Christ has already done on the cross. He died on the cross. He was the perfect sacrifice. Let me say that again for those in the back. Jesus Christ was the perfect sacrifice. I'm not the perfect sacrifice. You're not the perfect sacrifice because we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. But Jesus Christ was the sinless, spotless lamb of God who gave his life for all of us. So when we pray, we pray from the place, I love this, of the finished work of Jesus Christ. And because we have accepted Jesus Christ into our heart and into our life as Lord and Savior, when we do sin and miss it, the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we, play, we pray from the place of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Not because we are so good, not because we don't smoke and we don't chew or we don't hang with those that do. We pray from the place of what Jesus Christ died on the cross. That is good news. That's the good news right there. It's not about us. And of course, you know, God forgives us for in our struggles and our temptations and when we do sin against him. But don't think that um, I can't pray to God because I got a battle. I can't pray to God because I have a struggle. No, we can pray to God because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. And God helps us and graces us to overcome the things in our life. His strength. I love that. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. Amen. All right. Going to close this out. Amen. I love that. This is so good. Psalm 116, 1 and 2. I love the Lord because he hears my prayers and answers them. But he can only answer your prayers when you pray. That's good. He, can, he, doesn't, he doesn't answer your thoughts. He answers your prayers. I love the Lord because he hears my prayers and answers them. 
because he bends down and listens, I will pray as long as I breathe or I will pray to God as long as I live. In Jesus' name, that's your word today. The Lord hears your and answers your prayers. Amen. Let's give God a praise. I'm done. Hallelujah. I pray that you were blessed this morning. Let that Psalm encourage you. If you can read it during the week, that's your homework assignment. Read Psalm 116 from the Living Bible. If you don't have a Living Bible, you can just uh, Google the translation and read it. Psalm 116 verses 1 through 19. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your psalm and we thank you for the encouragement that you're the God that hears and answers our prayers, that you bend down and listen to our prayers. And Lord, we vow to pray to you as long as we breathe and as long as we live. Father, we thank you for your word that falls on good ground. And we thank you, Lord, for encouraging our hearts through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, it's communion time. So if you're taking communion, please get your elements ready. Um, if you have grape juice and crackers, that's fine. If you have bread and water, that's fine. If you have crackers and water, whatever you have, we're going to take our communion and we're going to get out of church early today. God bless you, Pastor Gloria. Happy Sunday to you. Amen. So Father, we just come this morning. We thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made and we come this morning to rejoice and to be glad in it, Father God. We thank you, Lord for this time of communion, Lord. We pray that you forgive us of everything that we have thought, said, done, and spoken against your will and against your word. And Father, as we come into this communion service, we pray, Father God, that you bless this service, Father God, as we lift up our bread or crackers, which is symbolic of your body, which was broken for us. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for dying for us. We thank you that your body was broken for us because now we're able to partake in salvation deliverance and wholeness, Lord. So Father God, as we partake of your body, if there's anything wrong in our bodies, we ask that you would heal us and make us whole. In Jesus' name, let's partake of the bread. Hallelujah. We're gonna lift up our grape juice or our water, whatever you have symbolically, we're gonna lift it up. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your body your blood that was shed for us, Lord. We thank you that your word declares that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or forgiveness of our sins. So Lord, we thank you for shedding your blood over 2000 years ago that we may have the right to the tree of life. Lord, we thank you for your blood that continues to wash us, cleanse us, purify us, sanctify us, forgive us, Lord, of all of our sins, past, present, and future. And we thank you for your powerful blood. We thank you for the power that's in the blood. And Lord, as we partake of your blood, if there be anything in and wrong in our natural blood, we ask that you would heal us and make us whole. And we partake of your blood. We thank you for forgiving us of all of our sins, washing us, cleansing us, purifying us, Lord. And because of your blood, there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. So Father, we thank you for your forgiveness and we receive it this morning. And we thank you for your blood in Jesus name. Amen. Ooh, that's tart. Amen, amen, amen. I feel like singing, I know it was the blood. <laughs> One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. I'm not going to sing, though, but thank you all for being on. To God be the glory. I pray that this uh, encouraged you this morning. I pray that you were blessed this morning. Amen. Thank you all for tuning in. And know that God is the God that hears and answers your prayers. Amen. So I love you with the love of the Lord. Have a blessed day. And, I, and I, let me just release a blessing over you. Father, I pray that as we're in this month of May, may you show yourself mighty. May you show yourself strong on behalf of your people. May you answer their prayers. May you open doors. May you heal bodies. May you do miracles. May you do the supernatural. May you show yourself mighty in all of their lives today. I pray that May would be a month of miracles, a month of open doors, a month of breakthrough, a month of answered prayer. May God show himself mighty to you in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. May God do it in the month of May for you in Jesus name. Thank you, Naira Carter. Amen. Bless you all. Love you too, Barbara Roundtree. Love you all. 
with the love of the Lord. Enjoy your day. Enjoy this Sunday morning. And we're out of church early. So have a blessed day. Love you too, Jill. Love you all. Thank you all for being on. And please, if you haven't already, share, share, share. Sharing is caring. Have a blessed day and know that God is the God that hears and answers your prayers. That's so good. God is the God that hears and answers your prayer. Let me just close out with that scripture again. I love it. All right. Psalm 116 and 1. I love the Lord because he hears my prayers and answers them. Because he bends down and listens, I will pray as I as long as I breathe in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go with God. Love you. Have a blessed day, everybody.